The latest poll out of Bloomberg says a virtual four-way tie for first place in Iowa. That is among all of the GOP candidates, Herman Cain, Mitt Romney, Newt Gingrich, and surprisingly, Ron Paul. This is the first time Congressman Paul has polled in first place slot in this race. So we're asking tonight, why is that? And what is so wrong with Ron Paul? Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. A Texas Congressman Ron Paul is the political force that nobody's talking about. Tonight I take a look at three areas where the media claims that Representative Paul is too radical to get the Republican nomination. The question is, is that true? Let's begin with his view on the role of the federal government. Paul was a strict constitutionalist. He wants to drastically cut back the size and the power of the federal government. As part of his plan to restore America, he would eliminate five cabinet agencies, HUD, the Department of Energy, Commerce, Interior, and Education. That plan would also abolish the Transportation Security Administration and return airport security to the airports. Congressman Paul also says he would end the days of government agencies writing laws through regulation. So this whole principle that uh, the executive branch as well as the judicial branch can write law, that has to be challenged uh, because this is how we got into this mess. This is why government is too big and uh, has to be reversed. So is the idea too radical? Well, not if you're a supporter of Texas Governor Rick Perry who wants to eliminate three of those departments, commerce, education, and energy. Or Herman Cain who says every federal agency, every government program, and every single expenditure must be reviewed and revised with a keen eye and a red pen. Paul's plan isn't more radical than the others, it's just much more specific. Now to the concern that Ron Paul wants to deal with Social Security by letting older people die. Yes, someone actually told me that not 24 hours ago. I would find that a lot of cuts a lot of other places. Matter of fact, on Social Security, it is already being reformed because the cost of living increases aren't there, so the value is going down. So, no, there's places we should cut. So what is Representative Paul calling for? The congressman does want to allow an opt-out on Social Security immediately for younger workers. But his plan to restore America keeps Social Security for all older Americans. Money used from the end of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan would be used to shore up the program, as well as money that will be saved from the elimination of those five federal programs. He also proposes keeping Medicaid and other welfare programs, but paying for them with block grants that are given to the states, and allowing the states to have the flexibility to solve problems. Now, there's also the concern that Ron Paul is an isolationist, anti-military, and weak on defense. So I would say there's a lot of room to cut on the military, but not on the defense. You can slash the military spending. We don't need to be building airplanes that were used in World War II. We're always fighting the last war. But we're under great threat because we occupy so many countries. We're in 130 countries. We have 900 bases around the world. We're going broke. But again, here are the facts. Ron Paul does not say that he is against defense. He says he believes in funding for a strong national defense. So, of course, he's the candidate that the military would not support, right? Well, according to USA Today and PolitiFact, Ron Paul has received, get this, more campaign contributions from people who work for the military than either President Obama and almost three times as much as all the other Republican presidential candidates combined. So here's what you need to know. This is not an endorsement of Ron Paul for president. Those of you who don't support him have your reasons and you're entitled to them. But this is an endorsement for fair coverage and there is no question the congressman isn't getting it. Consider the fact that during Saturday's CBS debate in South Carolina, seven minutes and 45 seconds worth of time was allotted to Rick Perry. Five minutes and 45 seconds worth of time to Rick Santorum who was polling at nearly the last place among presidential contenders. In comparison, Ron Paul got a whopping 89 seconds worth of time. Does that seem like fair coverage? And that is Reality Check.